You're listening to Yellow Chair Collective, the podcast, episode number 66, with educator Stephanie Bautista and licensed marriage and family therapist Ariel Lundrum, hosts of Happiest Pod on Earth. Yellow Chair Collective is a private practice that's now located in several states across America, but we need your help to spread the message of helping others gain awareness of their own mental health care and how they can better their own mindsets. And so if you really enjoyed this show, please give us a review and or uh, share this with a friend that you know this can help. That's it. And let's listen to the episode. Steph, did you get your bangs done? Thank you. I thought I cut them too short because I don't know what I was thinking doing them in the middle of my kid's <laughs> bath. I was like, I could do this really fast. And then I panicked and I'm like, oh, no, I got bangs They're randomly. <laughs> so I went to a super cuts one day and I was like, hey, I want to get bangs. And the lady was like a first time hairstylist student. And she's like, I know exactly what's going to look good on you and your wavy hair. So she started like cutting it. <gasps> And but like she that. didn't know how to get the hair out of my face. So there was hair in my eyeballs for like days. Do you know what I'm talking about? That happens. It's the worst. That happens. And I was wearing contacts. Oh it it truly is the worst. It's the worst yep. feeling in yep. the world. But I um I actually just got off of an interview with your brother, Josh. He told me, he literally texted me. I'm at work right now. <laughs> yes, I can see all, can the, see all the, the teacher stuff. School stuff behind me. He was like, oh, can I borrow your um, your mic and your headphones? I have my interview with Helen. And I'm like, I have my interview with Helen. What are you talking about? And then he was like, what time were you at? I'm like, I'm at five, but I have my stuff here at work. And then he was just like, oh, yeah. okay. And then the earthquake happened. And then we never like picked up on our conversation because I was like, did you feel the 4. earthquake? 4.4 4 magnitude, 4.4 4 to 4.6, yeah. I think you can argue, but... Um, I was in the middle of work mm -hmm. and I, I don't correct me if I'm wrong, but we've been getting a ton of earthquakes recently. Mm -hmm. We just yeah. had one. Um, I'm in Silver Lake right now. So we were right next to the epicenter and the whole oh building shook gosh. like I've <sighs> never felt before. And a friend of mine who lives in South Pass was like, it felt like an explosion <sighs> happened, like right really? outside my door. And he was like, I don't get scared often. Oh but I was gosh. scared. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know how how intense you all felt it, but it was pretty big I was on in the part. I was on the second floor of a big building, so it wasn't that bad. But um, I was in my apartment for one of the three because there's been three, like, really strong ones recently. Um, and it just has felt like the one of the biggest earthquake series we've ever had. And it's kind of like – crazy because California earthquakes are not that like intense. I feel like we've been getting some intense ones. Mm -hmm. No, uh, the, the one the other day, um, at night, uh, like the bed was shaking and I thought like, I thought James was like scratching his leg like vigorously. I was like, could you stop that? And then the phone went off and I was like, my bad. Um, and then this time we felt like the couch shake, but the dog did like blue didn't even react. So to her, it was like nothing. Unlike when we went to the restaurant, so oh, I yeah. went to a restaurant and like the lights were, sh everything was shaking, but yes. before it happened, Bef blue kept scratching mm -hmm. at me, trying to get my attention. And then, and I was like, what, stop that. What yeah. is going on? And then all of a sudden the earthquake and like everyone at the restaurant was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah she did because we were like what is yeah, I was like does she yeah. want water we were just having a conversation and like we were enjoying our salads mm -hmm. um maybe it was because mm -hmm. blue was like on pavement and like yeah. it wasn't like the house yeah, I, that's probably why she felt yeah it. in the house she was just like on the couch yeah. next to us and just w like was not even yeah. bothered and um but yeah the the one at the restaurant was the one that got her yeah um, I was ironically on the couch yeah, she's sleeping with right now my brother that last earthquake and we just looked at each other we were watching the Olympics and we looked at each other like was that real <laughs> <laughs> what is happening and he was like that's I think that crazy. was real <laughs> but yeah we we were talking about the one today in the house and we were all trying to share. It was like, okay, who has like the best earthquake story? And I was like, no, no, nobody's beat me yet. Nobody's beat me yet. My earthquake made me evacuate my home country. So, 
Yeah, when Mount Pinatubo erupted, I was I was there. I was like two yeah. or three, and I my dad came home from work, and I was like, Dad, the walls were dancing because <laughs> wow, the house like yeah. lifted up. <laughs> well, maybe they can argue. Uh, it was like a that seven. It wasn't an earthquake story. <laughs> that was an mm. eruption story. Because, mm, but it was the it was the earthquake from oh so it was the aftershock. The Got it. Yeah, okay. it was a seven. Because I was uh, just like, yeah, yeah. that sounds like yeah. an eruption story. <laughs> yeah. Nope, counts, counts, counts. Well, it's been about a month. I know we all we all had to cancel with you. I'm so sorry that we did last minute. Um, Ariel went through a little bit of sickness. <laughs> Poor thing. Yeah, I had oh my, my first gosh. my first COVID. My very first. How was that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. crappy the first few days because I didn't lose taste and smell. Instead, everything was off. Like my roommate made rom- ramen. Like this was the day the day before I had tested positive. And like to me, it smelled like cat urine. And I was just like, so I was searching the house Urinated. thinking my cat had like I was sniffing. Yeah. And then it's like I went to her and it was like, oh, it's your ramen. I was like, is the ramen bad? And it's like and everyone else was like, Ariel, you're crazy. So then I that's that's what made me test for COVID because yeah. I was like not feeling well and a little stopped yeah. up. And I was just like, that's I've never had that. And so, yeah, for the next few days, coffee smelt weird. My my grilled cheese smelt weird. It smelled like acid, like everything smelled like that's rancid. Crazy. Yeah. 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 Yep. Everything's back to normal. No cough. Smells Life smells back, back to normal. normal. But it was <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. With school starting and everything, it'll <laughs> same for stuff. School How is starting. Cool? <laughs> yep. We interrupt the regularly scheduled programming to introduce you to Yellow Chair Collective's upcoming event highlights, where we're bringing you to the best in mental health, wellness, and community engagement. Here's what we have lined up for you. First up, don't miss the second installment of the AARP and AAPI Idea Talk series. This virtual event is all about achieving work-life harmony and wellness. Join us as mental health professionals and caregivers share their personal stories and experiences, offering valuable insights and resources for mental health support. Our co-founder, Sujin Lee, will be on the panel. This event is going to be in the link description below. Event number two is our Health and Healing Professionals Networking event. It's happening on Saturday, September 21st, and head to the Brookside Park in Pasadena for our Health and Healing Professionals Networking event. This is hosted by Yellow Chair Collective. This is your chance to connect with like-minded individuals in health and wellness, exchange ideas, establish valuable connections, and engage with fellow professionals who share your passion for health and healing. This event runs from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. with light snacks and refreshments provided. The link will be in the description down below. Event number three. On September 10th, 2024, Yellow Chair Collective is hosting an author event with Susan Liu, a special occasion for our monthly Asian American Mental Health Book Club. We'll be hosting an online conversation with Vietnamese American author, playwright, and performer Susan Liu discussing her memoir, The Manicurist Daughter. This event is a must for anyone interested in exploring Asian American identity and mental health themes in a supportive community setting. The event will take place via Zoom from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Don't miss this opportunity to engage with a talented, insightful author. That's it, and let's get back to the regularly scheduled program. It's good. Um, we just finished our summer. Well, not just finished. It's been like two weeks now since we finished summer camp. Um, but yeah, getting ready for the school year. All the teachers were here today um, getting mm. their rooms ready. Um, my son is starting oh. here next week. So I thought I told myself I wasn't going to be nervous, but I'm nervous mm. now because <laughs> he tells me, I go, Arlo, you're going to start school soon. He's like, I don't want to go to school. I want to go to daycare. That's like, crazy adamant every day i don't want to go to school but i'm also like he doesn't know what it is so i shouldn't take it that much to heart because he has no idea and i keep telling him mommy's gonna be at school with you mommy's work is your school and he just looks at me like what you're crazy like what are you talking about so i want to go to daycare (laughs) where i eat carrots (laughs) yeah and i get 
hot like adobo and rice because this Love daycare it. is ran by my aunt. So she, he gets Love Filipino that. food every meal. Um, so Love I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna Aww. meal prep for him. <laughs> A double and rice or spam and rice, rice or Way whatever. That was my that was my lunch growing up. Or microwavable pizzas. You know what got me to actually go to school? Mm. Every year, my mom would take me school shopping and would let me like buy like something brand new for my school year, and it actually got me excited about school. But I was also a really talkative yeah. kid, so I think I loved it for the social aspect too. But I was always that kid that chased after her mom's car after her mom left. So it took me a couple mm-hmm. months. Yeah, it's it's so funny. I feel like you know maybe all young Filipino girls are just you talkative so? by nature, because I I was the same way. I got in trouble. I, I went to Catholic school first, second year, and school. I the nuns hated me because I talked too much like they were just like I remember Sister Lupe was just Sister like Lupe. I was on her hit list <laughs> wait I was on her hit Steph, list I have she a question to ask you because Josh was telling yeah. me last interview mm-hmm. with him your brother yeah that you actually got him to start playing upright bass because you wanted to play bass and your boyfriend now husband ended up buying you one and and I didn't do but anything I, I with it. I thought that was so sweet <laughs> that like he would buy you a bass at that young, that's young love. Yeah. So it was serious from the start. Yeah. He totally got oh. it at a pawn shop. And I was like, oh my gosh, like he really went out of his way because he was working at In-N-Out oh. at the time. And like if you were working at In-N-Out, yeah. like you were making a good chunk that of money so more sweet. than most people. So, yeah, he he gifted it to me and I started playing. But I think, the res- of course, the responsibility mm. of being firstborn and having to work yes. and then uh, go to eldest, eldest daughter. daughter, go to college, all that stuff. Same. I just didn't have time to sit down and play. So um, I just gave it to him. I was like, here, you do something with it. <laughs> I know you are in a music program like he was able to get into orchestra that at his so middle sweet. school. And yes. I was in high school at the mm-hmm. time. And I'm like, here go so for it sweet. and yeah he took lessons and now he's more amazing he's than I could so, ever imagine he has like a perfect mix of just like the purity and love like I was telling him this during the interview I was like it feels almost like Christmas morning when I talk to you about music like it's like your eyes light up and it's mm-hmm. like poetry to your to your face yes it's his first yeah love. it's his first love I truly thought he was never gonna have a girlfriend ever because or a partner ever music. I was like how much he loved music because I was a little concerned mm. but then I understood his relationship with music and I was just like okay like yeah. I get it and and then right when I got it he went and now he's dating someone Cute. <laughs> yeah who gets, who gets it? it who like, understands that it wasn't it wasn't that it was like there was a fear that he mm. wouldn't find somebody that would want no. him it was there was a fear of like the partner feeling second fiddle. to to the music to the <laughs> music yeah. instrument to to the the being a musician mm-hmm, really. to that so Can core I ask to his identity. That question? Yeah. Because I yeah. feel like you're both with people that are extremely ambitious, right? And so like have you ever felt second to your partner's ambition? Because we're mm. all ambitious yeah. women. I mean, you yeah, yeah. That. When you yeah. think about it that way. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with yeah. that? Yeah. 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 You can definitely ask that. I'm a, I'm a mull over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Um Whenever you guys want to start, I know I'm at school and I'm, I think, one of the it's last okay. people I, in the building. So I always just be recording you know. <laughs> and I always, like, delete okay. whatever you don't want me to talk about. So Oh, all good, friend. All good. All good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then stuff the stuff the writing on the board. These are just field That's trips okay, that right? half of them happen. Okay. It's not, oh, it's not, not listing no. where okay. the kids what are. I and, uh, I just no. Stop and no, you're good. If you want. Or we can just, like, go into it like we've been. Yeah. Okay. No, we can go into yeah. it. All so good. I feel yeah, like we can where we can it. start yeah. is like, let's just catch up and answer that question. Because I feel like based on what you were sharing, like yeah. being with someone that's extremely ambitious and creative and all of us being creative and ambitious women, like how have we ever felt second to our partner's ambition? And how do we deal with that? How do we cope with that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ariel, do you want to go? We can have an open convo about this. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So it's, it's interesting because my, um, 
my I still solemnly swear to this point that my partner is an ADHD -er, and ADHD -ers have a different level of ambition and that they tend to be have an ability to be a jack of all trades um and and my partner he's also a gemini who's a good storyteller so like learning a new skill um taking on like random jobs like the ability to tell a story is absolutely necessary um for him to feel sort of like self secure and comfortable and a desire for a job that mm -hmm. is not a nine to five. Like, so me being a therapist isn't a job that's nine to five, but it's still too similar, right? There's, there's paperwork involved. Um, there's a consistent schedule. Um, and you're kind of like, uh, if you work in an agency, you have to sort of align with the agency's rule. But even if you're a private practice, even when you make your hours your own, you still have to be able to find clients to fill those hours, which means you tend to shift your schedule a little. But my my partner, he thrives with like the lack of consistency. And that is where our like drives and passions completely veer in complete different courses, because I need a set schedule. I need things planned. Even Steph and I, like when we hang out, it's because we planned it like months in mm -hmm. advance. We recently had an opportunity to do something in prompt two, but for a major, like a majority of our friendship, That's it's so like we nice. know what we're doing really, together yeah. months in advance. <laughs> So the struggle that I have with my partner isn't so much that I think his ambition makes me feel like I'm second. It's that mm. it's hard to fit me in, oh, in a way that a way I understand it. because it's so spontaneous. His, his job right now, he is consistently trying to be a tier one in the union. That means that he would get more work. It, and that is the thing that he stuck with, which is, um, you know, really fortunate that he he did find a thing that he's sticking with. It's always different because the jobs are different each set. However, it also means that we're like at the whim of who can hire him and when he's allowed to go because he's not a number one in the union. He's a number two. And the way that unions work is that the, the, the more seasoned people are chosen first and put on a job. And so he can go weeks or months without work and he'll have to just try and find like PAing work or other industry type work. Um, or he will find out like, will, and this is a common thing we you might hear on our podcast, the happiest pod where Steph and I will say like, Oh, we had to bring this other friend uh, to replace our partners because so, because my partner got a job, he's going to Texas and he's going to be gone for like a month. And so it creates this layer of chaos for me but comfort for him and so a part of it is me having to manage the knowing that there isn't like a right way like like me and my scheduling isn't the right way other people are different and it has a lot of like self-soothing that uh, is involved and uh at the same time also asking from him to uh be more mindful and cognizant of informing me as soon as he finds out about something. Because sometimes there will be plans in motion set and scheduled that I won't be aware of until it's already happened. And I, it'll feel like an aftershock to me versus um, if even if he just gives me a heads up, hey, I might have a job that gives me a sense of comfort to know like, okay, I can't think of um, things for us to do on this weekend, or I'm going to have to consider around like, um, like, feeding the cat and the dog, like what, what sort of like the house care ideas there are. So I, I think for me, it is, I have to take some ownership of what is mine and it is a reaction to this very gig lifestyle, which is LA at, you know, at its finest and is somewhat of being a therapist, private practice, which is what made me more comfortable to actually be a private practice clinician. When we were dating, I was working at an agency and I was only doing my private practice on the side because I had so much fear of the lack of consistency of funding. And it wasn't until I saw that he was doing gig work and sort of showing me that it was okay to have some inconsistency mm -hmm. and just trust the process that that I pushed myself in that realm. So there, you know, there is some learning from each other. He's definitely learned how to like plan more ahead or like block out time in his schedule for things that are for us. Like the, our anniversary weekend this weekend, he made sure that he didn't accept any jobs at that mm. time so that we could spend the time together. So we are learning from each other, but it is also a lot That's of like a really my own good point of like, what's the fine balance between understanding, but also communicating needs where I feel like, take what we're saying with a grain of salt, obviously, because Ariel's partner is in film 
and Steph's partner is in the military. Mm -hmm. So I think both of their advices are going to be very Mm -hmm. different, but it's interesting hearing like professional, strong, creative women like talk about how to understand partnership in this way. I have more questions, but I want you to answer Steph. Mm -hmm. No, all good. I mean, for me, um, obviously my husband being enlisted, it, it creates barriers for when we're available for each other. But I think because we've grown together for so long, um, I knew him before Mm -hmm. he was enlisted. Um, We are thankful to have many similar interests. So whatever feels like a me thing could always Mm -hmm. be an us thing because we love a lot of the same stuff. I mean, even if it comes to, you know, um, his niche thing is ever since he was enlisted he loves cowboy culture so he loves going to like western stuff like he wants to join a cowboy social club he loves line dancing um and I'm super down to do any of those things because like I love music of all you know shapes and forms and like I could be a fan of anything like there isn't you'd be hard pressed for me to be like Mm -hmm. I'm not down to do that because I'm pretty adventurous when it comes to that and it's because when we do new things together we're each other's safe space and um Mm -hmm. whether or not we're doing the first you know doing something for the first time together or doing something for the millionth time now with our kids experiencing it for the first time we know that you know we can always navigate and kind of figure things out in the moment because we've known each other for so long. So he made a lot of sacrifices when I was going to school, getting my higher education and all that stuff because I was working full time. That's when I met Ariel. I was going to school full time. We were both planning a wedding um, and he was working part time and doing military part time. So we knew we had a lot of time apart together, but the time that we did spend together we would always be out doing something. We would travel to a different part of LA. We would try something new. We would um, plan a vacation together, whether it be just a weekend trip to Palm Springs or to Vegas to visit our families up in the Bay Area. Like something would always be happening. Like we'd always have like, what are we going to do this season? What are we going to do during the holiday season? What are mm-hmm. we going to do for spring break? So it was always kind of like go, 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 which now at this age, I'm like, kind of exhausted I just want to stay home but we were never homebodies like we always wanted to be outside and Ariel knows this when you know she first met us we were literally doing something wow. every single week so mm-hmm. I don't know where that energy came <laughs> the from. energy of youth because <laughs> I'm exhausted youth. just thinking about it youth. again <laughs> but I mean even small things like oh I want to try a bakery on the west side or oh I heard this donut shop just open let's go That's like so cool. do that a lot of those things were just us exploring our city and like trying new things out. And if it was a bust, at least, you know, Mm -hmm. we did it together. Um, But now that he's more into his military career, I'm having, you know, to step back and make some sacrifices. Um, And I know there are points of contention, like every year during Comic-Con, it's always now so hard for me to try to find childcare because we can't do Comic-Con together. Like we normally do conventions together. Um, He'll help out, like distract the kids. And my kids are so young still that I can't like just leave them somewhere. Um, So it always coincides with his annual training where he's, you know, on base for a whole month or, you know, what have you. So we do have to like kind of navigate that still, but he will never tell me to not go for whatever I'm doing. Um, And he makes sure that I am feeding my creativity because when you're in the grind like this, it's so hard to lose sight of it. And, you know, there's so many times where I'm like, oh, maybe I just got to drop something. But he knows what it means to me and, you know, how it feeds my soul. And like, you know, he would never, I guess he would never take the aux cord from (laughs) me in my car. Because he knows I want to listen to something specific. (laughs) And I guess that is in life. Like he would never pull that away from me. He's he'll he'll never be like, you know, well, we're going to do this because I'm doing it. Um, It's more of a mutual understanding. It's so interesting, like hearing you both Mm -hmm. talk about your relationship because it you're at two very different stages of the relationship. Right. Like Ariel um, has a boyfriend Mm -hmm. and like navigating career and anniversary, whereas Mm -hmm. Steph, you've been with your husband for a really long time since you were like in high school. And so it, it sounds like the two of you are navigating things in a very different way, but I also see the lens of therapists coming out Mm -hmm. in what Ariel is saying of like, 
let me reframe it not really being about a tear, but it being more about a way of knowing or a way of being. Mm-hmm. But the way you're talking about it, Steph, is because you know him through and through, like you know and have a sense of understanding. Would you both say that like great like understanding and insight like that takes time? Absolutely. I mean, I think because I, I've i seen the different perspectives and parameters when it comes to like what the main aspects of your life, your family, your circle of friends, uh, mm-hmm. your your personal relationships and your career. I'm so in tune with all of those things that for me, decision making isn't so much like are all those things aligned? It's more of is this the right time to do something like this? Mm-hmm. Um, are we in that stage of our lives where we should dis or do this or we shouldn't do this? Like back when I was saying, you know, every weekend we do something. Now I'm like, the kids just want to stay home. They're tired of being lugged around by us to try a new burger spot. Um, maybe we should give them a break and let them just play with their toys at home. And that's OK. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, when it comes to the layer of understanding, both as someone who's who does couples therapy so thinking of it from like that lens and then also being a witness of friends that have had long-term relationships like Steph one of the things that I also want to add on is that the partner you understand in the beginning might not be the partner that you understand five seven 10 20 years from now there has to be room for like growth and evolution and I I notice in relationships that are asking for like assistance through couples counseling it's because there's this fear of the change you aren't who i originally had chosen to be with and so does that mean that the relationship needs a change i need to change too or have we grown apart and that question is very scary to ask but when you step into a relationship knowing that you and your partner are already changing because you've decided to be in a relationship so now you're not even like the people you were when you first stepped in if you always look for that evolution and growth it makes it easier versus seeing it as like we're Mm. drifting apart because we're this is really interesting I didn't know we were going to talk about this but I'm glad that it was brought up as a side topic but like I think you know, going into the topic today of what we were originally going to talk about, which is like creativity, R&B and karaoke. I think that like when it comes to relationships and it doesn't even have to do with romantic relationships only, but I think that, you know, in the realm of creativity and even in the realm of human dynamics, it sounds like the two of you have a sense of curiosity and a strong sense of self that drives the relationship forward. Because if we this is what I'm hearing and you can correct me if I'm wrong, where if our identity was only in our partner and how our partner treated us, our sense of self would then diminish. And I, I feel like this is a perfect segue into music, but would you agree to that? Like my, is my observation correct? Or is there more that you want to add to that? Uh, I think I would agree uh, that that makes sense for us. Um, yeah. Because there's also like that cultural component. Some of us have culturally been raised to like see our identity through our family or our partner. And I don't want to say that that is um, less or better than what we're experiencing. Uh, but I think at least maybe Steph, maybe a little bit different for you. But for me, because I was raised by like a single parent and um, uh, by a white dad, I, I see my like self-identity as still necessary to be able to have a relationship. Whereas um, maybe if my parents had stayed together and I was raised more by my mom, I would have maybe more traditional views of wanting to see myself in partnered with somebody and feel that that layer of connection. Yeah, I think you. that's definitely, you know, like, thank you for saying that, because, you know, that that's a really big part of growing up. Right. Um, I think for myself, my parents were working so much that I had to create my sense of self because I, you know, my hobbies weren't nurtured too much by my parents, which is why I think when my brother was born, I made sure to nurture his likes and interests and what he loved because 
I kind of had to discover that all on my own and living in a multi-generational home with cousins, um, people who are like seven years older than me, like into this, you know, Asian American culture that we're probably going to talk about in a bit. Um, I created my sense of self based off of them because I saw them Mm -hmm. stepping into young adulthood and me wanting that so much for myself, I created myself in that mirror image. And so because I had that freedom, since, you know, my parents weren't hovering over me, um, I, I was able to kind of create that, you know, and carry that through as I was growing up. And, you know, since my partner grew up with me, he kind of got taken along for the ride. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't mean to, you know, put it, I guess, in that way where I'm like, this is me. This is my identity. It was more like, this is what I like. And if you want to come along for the ride, then go ahead, like strap in because, you know, like this is just what makes me happy. This is, you know, my, my happy place. It's, it's interesting hearing you both talk about relationships because it, you're both so fun and like, um, you, it, you don't take life very seriously. <laughs> like there's an, there is an well, element of you. seriousness, but well, there's like an added layer of like childlikeness, which makes me like understand happiest pot on earth a little bit more because it's like a desire to understand life through this childlike lens. And I want to segue seamlessly mm-hmm. into like your relationship with music, like as Filipina Americans, as a Filipino myself, I grew up with a ton of original Filipino music, a lot of R&B, growing up in LA, a lot of um, mm-hmm. like greatest hits and like jazz and funk and 70s and 80s music. Mm-hmm. I'm curious about what your musical landscape mm-hmm. looked like for both you, Ariel and Steph individually. Cause I know Ariel, you moved around a lot as a military kid, right? So I'm curious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Steph, do you want to go? Well, yours is interesting. I want to hear this first. (laughs) (laughs) Mine is interesting. I think so. (laughs) Really? Okay. Okay. Uh, So because I moved around a lot, um, a lot of the music that I would consume was Mm -hmm. um, what was like accessible. And so the first place we moved to was um, (laughs) Bremerton, Washington. Um, After, after we, after the Philippines, I was like three. And then I think I stayed there until like second or third grade somewhere around there yeah. um so all my music was west coast music uh and any and so that's where the r&b came in that's where rap came in i i didn't i mean aside from like cheryl crow later like i don't think i knew country music i didn't i didn't have yeah. uh, an awareness of that sound and then yes. my dad is a huge ramones fan so lots of rock um lots of um uh, even like metal. And, and that's what we were listening to in Washington. And then I um, uh, moved to Guam. And it was a lot of, uh, well, um, yeah, of course, by then it was like boy band era, right? So lots of boy bands, lots of girl pop groups. But also that's when I started um, getting introduced to um, K-pop and uh, different um, musical yeah, genres that so were cool. like in the Malaysian islands. Um, and uh and then Korea. And so then definitely was in K-pop and then a lot of UK artists, because I guess UK artists tend to like get topped mm-hmm. or like That's introduced so cool. sort of like in Asia before they come to the US. Um, and then after that, I my dad retired. I moved to Kansas. Um, there were some there was like a couple of like for a few months, we lived in Hawaii and a few months we lived in Japan, but it was like not enough for there to be consistent understanding of those experiences but my dad retired to Kansas and that's when I got introduced to country music and I I loathed every bit of it I did not like the twang I did not I I didn't like it however in order to be able to be accepted Mm. socially amongst my peers I had to sort of like it so it wasn't until oh, yeah. um, the Cars so movie with yeah. Rascal Flats that I was like, okay, that's yeah. <laughs> exactly. I was like, okay, that's my band. I will, I will be a Rascal Flats girl, so I know like their songs. Of um, course, it had to be a Disney like <laughs> thing. <laughs> it ha- yes, yes, yes. But now it's like Miss Mulberry. That's like one of the songs that they have oh, yeah. um, sitting on the front porch. Yes, and then and then there were like the top country songs that are, um, I guess, like people like to memorize the lyric as a phrase. So there's oh, one yes, where yes, she yes. thinks my tractor's uh-huh. sexy. I know that song. 
Um, uh, there's the one with the ticks. Um, we're going to check you for ticks. Oh my gosh. It's, it's blanking on me, but yeah. So I memorized the songs that everybody had like the quote to, and then Rascal Flatts. (laughs) And that was the way that I could like be comfortable in this space Mm -hmm. with this music that now, if it sounded very rock, I was good with it. Um, even like, you know, Taylor Swift was country and then pop. I was, I was good with those, but anything that was like Garth Brooks, like pure country music, it was mm. not something that I was used to and I was not comfortable mm. with. And like, I, I had no poker face. <sighs> like I wasn't hiding <laughs> it. <laughs> so I had to do oh a deep gosh. dive into LimeWire, <laughs> figure out some country music that I, so could, interesting, I could actually have an landscape. affinity for. I actually, um, have you heard of this. Post Malone um, like collaborating in country and getting into that? I think the, mm-hmm. the music with like, Mm-hmm, with like mainstream mm-hmm. pop and country is becoming so much more mainstream, but I digress. Steph, your musical landscape. Yeah, for sure. I mean, music was always all around um, my life. Uh, my mom immigrated to New York before, uh, right after the Philippines. So her and her siblings um, got into like that part of America first. My dad, however, went to Saudi Arabia. <sighs> So after he migrated, he got a job out there um, and then they reunited here in Los Angeles. But I think both of their musical worlds kind of collided when, you know, we they had me. So uh, growing up on my mom's side, she loved Mm -hmm. anything soulful, um, a lot of jazz, a lot of R&B, a lot of um, just (laughs) diva singers, I guess you could say, Um, uh, the Aretha Franklins, yes. the yes, uh, yes, Sade's, yes. um, all of that. It was just always around. My dad loved what? arena rock. So it was a lot of Journey, a oh, lot yeah. of Ario Speedwagon, a lot of Led Zeppelin, a lot of just classic rock. And these were tapes that he was able to acquire in the Philippines, brought them to Saudi, and he would That's play so them cool. in the garage when, you know, we had a house with all my cousins. And so they also discovered uh, VHS concerts. So every morning um, I would either wake up to <laughs> Steve Perry um, singing Journey or Ario Speedwagon's Greatest Hits so uh, cool. concert. Um, and yeah, like uh, the radio was always on in the car. Like I... I think I went into the car once with a friend really young and they didn't play any music in their car. And that was very <laughs> odd to me. <laughs> Why I is it quiet? This that. is kind of weird. Yes. I had a friend growing up who yeah. her parents actually asked her how her day was growing up and like would just want to hear her talk. Oh. I was like, Couldn't be me. Dad, why do you we yeah. not do that? But <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, don't yeah. ask me that. Yeah, I'd be that. like, okay, I it's don't fine. Know that. Um, <laughs> I'd be like, I, did I get in yeah. trouble? Did the teacher I call know. you? I'm I have to look back now. And like when I visit my parents, my mom will ask me those questions of like, "Hey, honey, how's your heart?" And I was like, "Like, uh, am I, am I in trouble? Like, am, am I, I being, being persecuted right now? <laughs> being interrogated? Or are they gonna sandwich this and they're gonna tell me something yes. I need to fix about myself because I feel like I'm being sandwiched yes, right now? I relate. It's like um, music was kind of like that great connector, especially because like as mm-hmm. Filipino parents, I think there was like a cultural and language barrier, and so music for me was like a way to, like, a way for my dad to connect to me of like, hey, here's the Beatles, or like this yeah. is soul, this is you know '70s. Yeah. He loved the Eagles mm-hmm. and. Similar to your dad, yeah, play a Eagles, tons of yep. concerts, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, ton of Eagles, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So Steve mm-hmm. Winwood, a lot of these, yeah. you know, Eric Clapton, like all of that was just always yeah. in my brain. Um, I totally forgot mm-hmm. before my mom went to New York, she went so to Australia cool. first, so she had a lot of you know British influence, um, yeah. Celine Dion, like all of those things, um, uh, and mm-hmm. brought that mm-hmm. over. But when I was in that multi generational home with my cousins who are a little bit older, that's when I got introduced to R&B, yes. to rap on that 90s, 90s level. Um, I remember having my seventh birthday and vividly hearing Snow's <laughs> Informer. And I'm like, mm. no one should have that at a seventh birthday <laughs> party. Because <laughs> it was just so like, so 90s. Um, 
it's just mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. about like that era yes. salt and pepper um tlc like mm-hmm. all of it was just mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. around we each had boom boxes <gasps> really? in every room of the house so it was like a rite of passage when yeah. i got my How boom box um because we had a huge i think i was i I think that that was like my wow. seventh or eighth birthday that I got my own boom box, but they made sure to give yes. me headphones. So I would literally like this be plugged <laughs> just in like just sitting in front of my boom box. <laughs> nothing's changed. Um, well, and with nothing's changed with borrowed yes. cassette tapes. And I was, you mm-hmm. know, like mm-hmm. a lot of young girls out there, I would sit there in front of Kiss 102.7 waiting for the beginning of my favorite Ace of Base songs Ace of to base. hit record. Ace of Base. A lot of Fred, Freddie Prince yes. Jr. movies had Ace of Base. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. So many. Um, yes. And then hit yes. and record yes. right before they go. Okay. Yes. Like before the, the DJ came in. Mm-hmm. Um, the radio. Yep. Uh, so I was always making mixtapes and always, you know, recording because mm-hmm. um, yes. I got a Walkman. Um, it was a hand me down from my cousins. And I cherished that thing so much, like every road trip. And I took a lot mm-hmm. of road trips when I was younger to visit family. I just have my headphones on just zoning out to music. I didn't really mm-hmm. own mm-hmm. my own music until. Do you remember back when you would get Pepsi bottles and you yes. would unscrew the top and you'd Yes. get a free oh. CD or a yes. cassette tape yep. at Tower Records. So mm-hmm. I won a free CD and I bought the f- <gasps> first Spice Girl CD no. with that bottle cap. Yeah, And that was nice. my first so CD cool. ever. Um, and I, I, I cherished it. I, I think I still have it. But um, it was funny enough because my second CD purchase was... <laughs> outcast stankonia oh, yeah. and i remember dragging yeah. my dad i i was just really into bombs over baghdad that was like my favorite song <laughs> How does it, go again? it was just uh oh, don't yes, do yes, the yes, thing yes, yes, that, yes. unless you plan to back bombs baby. over yeah yeah um yeah i really love that song and i was just like oh i my rule was i needed to love three songs oh, on the album that was my criteria for getting oh. an album because I, I love going to Virgin Records and Tower Records and like previewing CDs oh, back so when you cool. could do that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That was like such a core memory for me when I would uh, go to the mall and I would just like ask, disappear and go to Tower Records. But yeah, like. So when when I previewed them on the military mm-hmm. base um, in the commissary, it had that dome that you could like stand oh, under. And no, listen. these were I just headphones that. wherever I went. But oh, I remember seeing the oh. dome in Japan because they still have tower records Gosh, there. So and cool. so, um, yeah, super cool. Um, but I mean, I, I always had music accessible mm. for me to listen to. So a lot of the mm-hmm. old school mm-hmm. classic rock, R&B, um, soulful stuff, mm-hmm. I always had access to mm-hmm. that. So I can listen to that at any point. But um, there was a point in high school where I really got into like goth and punk and it was just like Lincoln Lincoln Park Park everything and um that was like me and Mm -hmm. my my husband's like Mm -hmm. favorite like I was that girl that ironed patches on to her backpack but I actually didn't iron them because I was too scared that I could never use them again so I hand sewed them (sighs) Like so I stitched them myself onto my backpack. I was so into because I wanted to use them again. I was like, what if I don't like this color backpack next year? Um, so, yeah, like I had a Blink-182 patch. I had like a Lincoln Park badge. Mm-hmm. And that was like a, um, a conversation wow. starter with a lot of people because I moved schools mm-hmm. often um, throughout L.A. And yeah, like I was kind mm-hmm. of automatically branded as like a, a rocker so girl cool. or whatever, which was very it was very like you couldn't find somebody like that who was like Filipino American and like that everybody who was Filipino American was just like an ABG. Yes. Like before that was even like a thing, yes. they were Asian mm-hmm. baby girl. Um, yeah. They yeah. loved R and B. They loved, you know, boys mm-hmm. who had race cars, but that couldn't, mm-hmm. I was not that person. Mm-hmm. So um, mm-hmm. I guess that made me stand out and you couldn't have headphones on campus. So I would get in trouble for that. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. <laughs> silly high school mm-hmm. rules. Mm-hmm. Now and everybody AirPods. has iPods. You can just hide it AirPods. With your hair now. Yeah. Yeah. You could just hide it with your hair. Um, yes. Yeah. And then yes. so um, because of that, like I, I just went into like loving British rock and getting into all of that. And in college, I was really upset mm. at the state of music. I was like, everything sounds the same. Mm. It was when T-Pain oh, yeah. was doing all the auto-tune. 
And now that I've seen the documentary, which, which is my <laughs> love, yeah. T Pain. I love him even to I love this him day. Now. I watch his Twitch stream. He is the most beautiful soul in the world. I hope he and his wife live many happy years. I love together. it now, but so then, for me, oh, college was not like it was. No. I didn't see it as this is all yeah. the same. I was like it was a whole new world to me. And at the same time I was um, in a, a sorority and I had fraternity brothers wow. from like Texas. I had fraternity brothers from um, uh, California, mm -hmm. um, uh, Alabama, like they were from mm -hmm. all over the Southern States and West coast. So it was all kinds of like rap music. Mm -hmm. I was listening to little Wayne. Oh my I gosh. Was young money. Like yeah, see, <laughs> I was so like annoyed by all of that for whatever reason I was annoyed. I was like, Oh my gosh, this all sounds the same. So I just turned, I turned fully J pop, like fully J pop, mm -hmm. fully K pop. Mm -hmm. I never turned on the radio in my car. And now that I had an iPod, yes. I could, connected to my car my at the pocket. time oh, yeah. and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah in my pocket so yeah. I like did a deep dive and like I before k-pop got really big um I was really into anime and just like listened to nothing but so Japanese cool. music and then that's when I went into Japanese jazz and like all of like wow. the different genres of Japanese music and how they interpreted it um and at that time I did really want to be a music historian it. because I had Mm -hmm, such mm -hmm. like I would just all night just so cool. looking up music finding new music I've destroyed so <laughs> many PCs with my downloading <laughs> and just reckless <laughs> abandonment and reckless, just I've destroyed so many devices and I would you know just That's get so another cool. PC um, but I mm -hmm. I really mm -hmm. wanted to do that but of course no one showed me that it could be a career it was just mm -hmm. kind of like yeah. It would just be a hobby at most. But, you know, like I always kept it in my back pocket. I took them mm -hmm. as electives like music history, um, rock history, R&B history, even like um, finding out about old mm. country music. Uh, I, that's how I fell in love with country. Just li listening to like really, really like the first like iterations of country music, which is why now I can appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But once they start rapping, I'm kind of done. Like, yeah. I don't want to. Deal with that. <laughs> For some reason, um, I feel the need yeah. to bring this up where when I was younger, I always wanted to have an iPod classic, you know, with the silver background and it's like super oh. thick and you get to mm -hmm. scroll on like the the touch wheel yeah. my parents were too poor to yep, get that so mm -hmm. I remember for my birthday my dad got me like a one gigabyte iPod shuffle the ones that clip to your shirt yeah. but I was so the sad clip. when the iPhone <laughs> came out because mm -hmm. they phased out the iPod classic and now it's like no yeah. longer mm -hmm. which is so yeah. sad yeah <gasps> I still have mine in my car <laughs> Mm -hmm. If I plug it in, I'm pretty sure something will happen. So I'm actually going to do that when yeah. I get home and I'll plug it in. Um, but yeah, no, I kept it because like that was like my heart and soul oh was in gosh. that iPod. And like all the playlists that I would make, um, it just opened up mm -hmm. so many things mm -hmm. to me. But yeah, you know, like I I definitely resonated with a lot of the genres and appreciate more of them now that I can go on Wikipedia and find out the history of all of it and um the intentions of how it came I, about I didn't know that, so. sorry Ariel go ahead I'll ask it later yeah, and I I was I'm oh, curious about no, uh, you go ahead. Japanese jazz oh. like I didn't even know that existed yeah and my brother's a big oh. proponent of that um if you go on to he has um he has another Instagram that's the mm -hmm. City Pop bassist. So he does bass covers of a lot of Japanese wow. jazz. So um, artists like Cassiopeia, um, a lot of uh, now uh, Maria Taikuchi, who um, is part of the City Pop movement. Um, her song went viral on TikTok. Everybody uses it. It's called Stay With Me. Mm -hmm. uh, he does covers and it, it's really interesting their technical take on jazz because we know it, uh, you know, New Orleans jazz, like we know it as mm -hmm. technical already, but they take it to another level as if, you know, it was kind of like wow. our jazz on steroids. So cool. And their musicality is just so cool. Um, and you can really feel and like immerse yourself and feel like you're in your wow. own 80s anime. Um, and you can hear the influences when you... Um, listen to old anime like Macross or um, even Evangelion like you could hear a lot of that musicality so in there cool. so Ariel what were you gonna say I'm yeah. sorry I interrupted you okay 
No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. Okay. So first I just wanted to tell you, I, I don't remember the beat of the song, but it goes because I'd like to see you out in the moonlight. I'd like to kiss you way back in the sticks. I'd like to walk through a field of wildflowers. Ew. I'd like to check you for ticks. That's the Tick song. It's by Brad Paisley, oh, Brad Paisley. And it was like the love anthem song of like, I don't know, my sophomore year. He I ended think. up marrying so that's that the girl tick song. from... Um, that's the Tick song. It's there. Father of the Bride. Um, yeah. Oh, that's how really? I know about him, actually. Oh, um, I know that. As a, and isn't that... Bride. Is that Goldie No, that's Hans Kate Hudson. She, no, she that's Kate Hudson. She ended up dating... Um, Diane no, Keaton, uh, father of the bride uh, cast. So Brad Paisley is married to Kimberly Williams Paisley. She was the one that oh. played the daughter. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And then uh. oh, the daughter. Okay. I was like, okay, Dad okay. Keen's a little old for <laughs> style icon. Yeah, right. You know well, I mean? Hey, I don't know. <laughs> right. She's great. Absolutely. She always slays with she her suits. Looks so good. I love yeah. them. Yeah. But. Yeah, so so I, I that is a real <laughs> song. I didn't make up it. <laughs> and then the other thing was I was going to say, like, a college seems to be where Steph and I's music, like, has experiences di diverged differently. Um, and and Steph, you mentioned, like, British artists mm -hmm. uh, and sort of, like, rock um, and then, like, the goth punk metal sort of era. And so that was when I was in Korea. So, of course, it was, like, um, Lincoln Park, New mm -hmm. Found Glory, Simple Practice, but they mm. also had this British band called Busted, and they have a song called Year Three Thousand, and then yes, the Jonas yes, yes. Brothers ended up remaking uh, it. Joe yeah. Bros. <laughs> yeah, and so I remember that. I remember that song being very pivotal. I moved to Kansas. No one had heard no. this band. No one had heard this song. I like played it. Everyone's giving me like this blank face, and yeah. Jonas Brothers hadn't mm -hmm. like what been a, a great thing song. yet. So. That's like, oh, oh wow. Every every time I hear it, it's such a it's such a vibe. It's so Jonas Brothers. It's did it but Busted did it first to this random British. Jonas Brothers still gets to me now. Like they're they're wonderful. Their songs. But I mean when they came out with Burning Up again, I was like, I love this. It's a good one. But I I love um I think mm -hmm. Nick Jonas is a really, really good prodigy, like a child prodigy that just like grew up with a ton mm -hmm. of like R&B mm -hmm. influence. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I hear it so much in their music. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I will say like, mm -hmm. have you guys heard of Amy Mann? Yeah. yeah. Ariel, you mm -hmm. have it? She's yeah, like a singer songwriter, she was in, right? No. Like a 70s yeah. or 80s band called Till Tuesday. And she came out with like Voices Carry. Hush, hush. Keep yes. it down now. Yeah. Was no. Was and then scary. she she ended up yeah, starting like a solo song. career and now she's like a musician mm -hmm. for like um she does like score for different movies like she did one for magnolia a few mm -hmm. years ago um but like i don't know when i hear mm -hmm. people talk about music it kind of like even the the facial expressions that the two of you have when it comes to music it's like <gasps> like it it's like a delight yeah um it reminds <laughs> me of like how amy man talks about mm -hmm. like it's kind of how people operate in life. Like when people think about music, they think about different snapshots of their life and where they were when things were happening. And it's mm -hmm. so evident in like your life, Ariel, when you talk about moving to different places, how like music helped you remember. And Stephanie, like different high schools that you moved to, different schools and like being that rocker chick, it's actually really fascinating because it's helping me understand like my own life and where it's coming from too. Is there, um, cause I, I realized that we're running out of time. We, we talked so much. I feel like blank and it's gone. Love we talking love talking to you. Guys to too. you. <laughs> um, is there yes. a soundtrack of your life right this now fun. where like you're, it could be a song, it could be a musical artist where you still, still feel really seen by, um, like what is something that you enjoy listening to or maybe replaying over and over right now? Hmm. That's interesting. I go through these waves of genres depending on like what my mood is. What's in the so, rotation? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. oh my good, I have to pull up my, my Spotify. Isn't right that crazy how music has evolved? The like, rotation. Yeah. We used to buy yeah. albums, and now yes. then there was iTunes, and then there was Spotify, mm -hmm. and Spotify like shattered the music yeah. industry. 
with subscription services. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Well, so my Spotify rap for like the past two or three years, like <gasps> really? my top artist has not been expect. the Beatles. <laughs> but that's never my top song. <laughs> Yeah, top yeah. artist always the Beatles, not the top song. I think this is the first year Whoa. that it will not be. The is it Beatles. nostalgia for you? Um, like, why the Beatles? And uh, yeah, so my um, aunt Dolores, my great aunt Dolores, uh, when uh, my when we moved to Kansas, the reason we moved there is because mm. family had a spare house that we could live in. And it was like, okay, if we don't have to pay rent or anything and my dad's retired, like, and the retirement check is not as pretty as you'd like it to be, yeah. um, we can afford this, we can live here. And it was with my great aunt um, Dolores, who, uh, when we moved to Guam, and this is when my dad was first as a single parent, she stayed with us for a couple of years so, to help him transition. And like, and because he had a lot of like top secret duty that he had to go do but he's not allowed to leave the kids alone. Um, and so uh, she is a, mm. like a matriarch for me. Um, and although I call her Aunt Dolores, she's technically like my second Everyone cousin. Be warned. Right? Like, <laughs> so, but yes, yes. Um, but she uh, loved the Beatles and we would, we would listen to the Beatles all the time. She was the one who introduced mm -hmm. them to me and we would, we would, I would watch Pokemon, <laughs> we'd listen to the Beatles and she would make me grilled cheese sandwich. And she was the first person so cool. to introduce me a grilled cheese sandwich. So like when I'm needing nostalgia, I listen to the Beatles to yes. think of her, or I listen to the Ramones to think of my dad. Mm -hmm. Um, this year I have been listening to everything that has like i guess been a dance on tiktok <laughs> so that's why i think the beatles are getting beat mm. out is because i was trying to learn the dances just on my own you know so i could trying to so i'm listening to the song to a wedding or something but if i were to say <laughs> you know it you know it um uh, this time I want you, 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 you. yeah. Um, but if we're talking about a song that seems to keep popping up uh, I have been doing trivia Fun. on Sundays with our, our friends, and I'm the person who um, guesses the song oh. and and the artist. I, I, I'm way better at song lyrics than I am artist and title, so that's that's something I'm actively learning. But I'm the one who has to has to bring mm -hmm. us in. That's the round. <laughs> that's my round. Um, unless they're playing Broadway musicals, then it's my roommate Travis's round. But for some reason, six different times the song has been return what? of the mac by mark a Morrison. classic and then a i just classic. keep i keep hearing it everywhere when when i Hello. went to disney star wars night it, that song was playing at disney star wars night it's that faded. song was playing at the um there's when they, we the were passing out in the ceremony <laughs> you know, the olympic ceremony you know the i don't yeah. know if you guys know this yeah, but like so. um tommy richmond's million dollar baby mm -hmm. <laughs> can't get rid of that song <laughs> that song's been popping up everywhere for me yes yeah yeah, it went mm -hmm. super viral. Mm -hmm. I hear it. Somebody's passing along on a bike. Yeah, I'm hearing that it's song. Just like, it, there's something <laughs> about the yep. song where like yep. he doesn't come off as this like soulful R&B artist, but like it's like rough and tumble no. meets mm -hmm. like soul. It's kind of like what people think about when they think mm -hmm. about Post Malone. Mm -hmm. Like you would mm -hmm. think rapper mainly, yeah. but like he has a yeah. voice. Yeah. You know? But mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Anyway, Steph, yeah. what's on yes. your rotation? Yes. I mean, man, there's too many things on my rotation, but I always have like a big snapshot of what's always on my daily mixes Ooh. on Spotify because that's how it knows I'm going back to the same Spotify's artist. Perfect so for you. if I pull that up, I know I hate it because I, I'm sorry to my brother. I want to support him in the music industry. So I need oh, to get rid of support? it soon and go back to Apple because they pay out more royalties oh. on Apple Music um, per Apple stream. Music. Um, Spotify is not mm -hmm. good at kicking oh. back whatever the artist is making. That. So um, Spotify, mm -hmm. I love you, but I also mm -hmm. hate you. Um, yeah. But dang, it's the, it's the conglomerating thing. of it all. The music, er, the money doesn't go directly to the artist. And, you know, uh, people like my brother have mm -hmm. to pay for it. But anyway, all that to say is that, dang, this algorithm Accurate. is always on point. <laughs> so I always have one mix that has New Edition, Mariah Carey, Usher, Usher, Usher. and like the gap band the barge prince oh my gosh, the um fits. bobby brown shaka khan with their vandross so i always have one mm -hmm. that's that and then i have another one that's purely k-pop so 
one that BTS because I was heavily using Spotify was my number one artist for like two years in a row. And I'm like, it's because it was an earworm. Like, I think they came out with one Mm -hmm. of their albums and I was just listening Mm -hmm. to it nonstop. And when I would listen to it, when I would like, you know, run or walk or whatever, it was just always that. So I always have like a K-pop like (laughs) daily mix. And this is like millennium K-pop too. So older artists like Super Junior, Girls Generation, Shiny. Like I was very into that. And then I have another daily mix of just Japanese music. So my favorite band was Arashi. And they have since Mm -hmm. been on hiatus Mm -hmm. because they're all older now. But they have been working since 1999 so they were kids kind of like new edition like a when they started year old band. and became mm-hmm. yeah 25 year old band super mm-hmm. obsessed with mm-hmm. them download a bunch of their stuff um and then i have my rock mix so lately i was listening to a lot of red hot chili peppers because they performed yes. at the closing ceremonies it's and crazy so, how like snoop dog i our representative flag and then red <laughs> hot chili peppers interesting choices yes very interesting yeah. Interesting also can't choices. Wait for the 2028 Olympics yeah. in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Me too. Getting tickets. I'm so excited. Same. I'm so excited. Same. Yes. Yeah. No, going. We should We're all going. go watch an well, event together. That would be the alarm so that fun. We are yeah. At time. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. the alarm. Let me turn it off really quickly. <laughs> no, all good. Okay. What a cute alarm. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a cute alarm it's, um, it's, a, it's on my iphone but i i do that to respect uh guest time but um oh, let me totally stop recording cool. and say thank you <laughs> yeah. yeah thank, thank you, you.